Ah. Awesome Blossom. Okay, so here we are with a comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the iPhone 4S. These are two very different devices, but at the same time their functionality is somewhat similar. Starting off with the physical, both devices carry the 8 megapixel cameras on the back, LED flash. Um, this is substantially bigger as you can obviously see just from the front. Uh, the screen on the iPhone 4S is a measly 3.5 inches, whereas the Galaxy S3 is around 4.8 inches, so a substantial change in size. Uh, Gorilla Glass 2 on this thing, and this is actually supposed to be Corning Gorilla Glass, which is, I don't know, allegedly better. But uh, as far as the resolution goes on the two devices, this one is um, 720 by 1280, so it is actually 720p resolution right here on the Samsung Galaxy S3. On the iPhone 4S, you have a 640 by 960 resolution. And some people say that the text is a little bit clearer on the iPhone 4S. Personally, I can't tell the difference, and I don't think it really matters that much. Uh, but we're going to go back a step to the exterior and compare some of the other physical things. Um, as you can see, the Galaxy S3 is substantially thinner. It comes in around 8.6 millimeters, whereas the iPhone 4S is 9.3 millimeters. 115.2 millimeters in height. This one is 136 obviously larger or taller this one's also wider but this is a little bit lighter than the iPhone 4s which comes in at 140 grams and this one being 134 grams uh, quad-core processor 1 gig of RAM uh, 1080p video recording 30 FPS from the back camera 720p and 30 FPS from the front camera for video uh, running Android OS 4.0 which is ice cream sandwich and on this one you have iOS 5 point something, who really cares because they all look the same. It's running um, a 512 megs of RAM and this is a 16 gig model, this is also 16 gigs. And this one's processor is, I believe, 1 gigahertz? It doesn't matter. Um, 4S lock screen gives you access to two things, slide to unlock or slide the camera up to begin using the camera. On the Galaxy S3 you have significantly more options including these four definable shortcuts on the bottom that you can set to anything where you hold it and then you tap it up. Or you can add gestures, so for example I can hold my finger, rotate the screen and that will open up the camera. This just frees up another location uh, on the shortcuts menu so you can take that camera icon off and just use the gestures to get to the camera. Once you're in the device, here you slide to unlock, here you can slide to unlock in any direction, once again. Doesn't really matter, not that big of a deal, but the benefit is the customization between the Galaxy S3 versus the iPhone 4S. It's pretty much non-existent on the iPhone 4S, pretty much cookie cutter. Everyone also, I mean, always has the same iPhone uh, design everywhere you look. Yes, you can jailbreak it and, and customize some things, but the Android gives you the option of six or seven home screens. You can select which one you want to be your home screen. So right now that blue icon indicates that that is my home screen. So if I press this and wherever I am, the minute I press this button again, it'll take me back to that home screen. And in fact, I can quickly uh, go through these home screens by doing that. Other differences between the two devices are uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 has this drop down menu on the top as you can see the multitude of options you have right here and it lets you control GPS, Wi-Fi, uh, screen rotation, Bluetooth, driving mode, in fact you can even control them through the S voice and I'm going to get to that a little bit later. Kind of like iPhone but iPhone is the handicapped uh, series, the handicapped version of the S voice because it can't do anything in Canada including finding locations. Yay, super awesome. As far as um, the Android, sorry, the Apple goes in comparison. You can do the drop-down menu, which, by the way, was the concept stolen from the Galaxy or from the Android platform about three or four years ago. All you can do here is really see your notifications, scroll through the weather, and for some reason stocks. Because I know so many high school and university kids are into stock market. It's important to have that ticker. Piece of crap. Now, just to show you guys the multitasking capabilities for the iPhone 4s, you can double tap right there. And you can see I have a few things open. 
Uh, and the way you close them is by holding the button down, pressing the close button on top of each one of the apps individually. Uh, whereas on the Android, you simply hold down this button and it shows you everything that's open. You can do a individual swipe and get rid of one thing at a time, or you can just press remove all. And if we check again, in fact, everything has been closed. So now for a browser comparison of the two devices. Here you have the iPhone 4S browser. I'm going to go to, I don't know, I'll randomly pick a URL like, oh, I don't know, awesomeblossom.com. Let that sit right there. I'm going to load it up over here. Awesomeblossom.com. Now I'm going to press go, ideally at the same time on both devices. And your mom. Okay, so they're kind of going, uh, and no surprise, the iPhone 4S did load up faster. The video icons are still loading. I believe the Galaxy S3 had a little bit of a lead on that. Uh, the interesting thing here is that if you, for example, click on a video in either device, the iPhone 4S will take you most likely to the YouTube app. Alright, whereas on the Galaxy S3 you can still navigate with the rest of the website as it's still playing in the background. Kind of cool feature. You can also uh, use it right here and uh, pause the video or whatever the hell you want to do. Uh, you can also uh, tap to zoom on either one of these two devices. For example, you go over here to the image or say you want to read some of the things, you can do that. Both will rotate if you turn the phone sideways. Now, the cool thing is with the iPhone, you can simply press this top bar and it'll take you to the very top of the page. For the Android, you just tap on the top and it should. Oh, your mom. Okay. There you go. So, you can just do that. And see, that also works to take it back to the top. There is a gesture I just haven't enabled it, or I guess I've disabled it somehow inadvertently. Um, and that is the browser. Now try to launch a game, namely Asphalt 7, because I like it and it is a lot of fun. So, I'm going to turn the boat sideways and let's see what happens ideally launching at the exact same time for both. There you go. iPhone 4S is a little bit faster. And yes, iPhone 4S is in fact ready to go. Tapping them both at the same time. I think the Android was a little bit faster there. Really, who cares? These are such such minor details that at the end of the day, it comes down to your experience individually on the device. So for example, if I click these at the same time, just to show you how the games look on both devices. see the iPhone 4 seems to be a little bit smoother than the Android uh, but let's see how the game itself behaves I noticed one thing though that while the Android was playing although it's a bigger screen it's a little bit easier to handle I noticed that the draw distance on the Android is a little bit slower than the iPhone 4s that's to say that as you're driving down the distance you'll notice that the iPhone 4s will automatically have like the everything down to the very focal point already on the screen Whereas on the Android, it takes a couple of seconds and you'll see car lights popping up or the road curvature starting to pop up and things will show up slowly. Uh, in general, fairly good user experience. The game itself is very fun to play on both devices. And uh, yeah, so that was the gameplay. And now for a very quick camera comparison of the two devices. Uh, they both have 8 megapixel cameras. The iPhone 4S is very simple. The layout itself is very simple. All you have in terms of options are HDR on and off, grid on and off, video mo mode on or off, light on or off. And as far as the Galaxy S3 goes, there are significantly more options once again. That's the name of the game with the Android platform versus the Apple. You get macro face detection which you can turn on or off. And here you have HDR, smile shot, beauty, panorama, cartoon. Uh, and one of the cool features is Burst Shot, 
where it in fact lets you take up to 20 shots within a matter of seconds. Let's say, for example, you're taking a picture of someone totally not creepily through the bushes. I don't, I don't do that. But say they move just a bit. This way, you can get 20 pictures in very quick succession and pick the best one that you think looks the awesomest. Let's go to HDR just to get a clean comparison between the two. So. This is my old watch. You can check out a watch skin review that I did a little while back. Anyways, let's picture a little bit of processing time and getting the image going. Whereas on the iPhone 4S, I guess just because it doesn't say processing, you don't think about it, but that's the HDR image on the iPhone 4S. And now switching to video mode on both devices. It's simple, as you saw on the iPhone 4S, the Android has a very similar idea. You can go here, turn on flash, exposure, exposure value, the resolution, anti-shake, which I'm gonna turn on. Uh, and now I'm gonna take a quick video and insert the videos from these devices into the main video you're watching right now. This is a video sample with the Samsung Galaxy S3 video of my watch. I don't know why. And then here we are, tap to focusing on the fly. And that is that. This is a video comparison of the iPhone 4S versus Samsung Galaxy S3. You can see my awesome watch here. Tap to focus on the fly. That's a Galaxy S3. Galaxy S3 is a breath of fresh air. I've been using the iPhone 4S for the last year. Uh, I've been using the iPhone 4 a year prior to that, so frankly I'm getting kind of tired of the iOS look. I mean, yeah, you can change the icons around, you can jailbreak some things, and you can customize them like that, but with the Android it's a lot more customization than anything before. And not to mention the fact that not everyone in the entire world has this device. So that's what makes this really cool, it's that not everyone has the exact same phone. I'm sick and tired of looking around and everywhere I look all I see is Apple or Blackberry. So frankly it's nice to have something a little bit different than everyone else. Anyway, so that concludes the video comparison between the iPhone 4S and the Samsung Galaxy S3. Be sure to check out the unboxing video right here for the Samsung Galaxy S3. Also check out the, um, what's it called? The in-depth review by my friend Jiro right here on the Samsung Galaxy S3. Once again, unboxing and other thingy with the other with the face right here. And check out some other random videos right here. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.